our spiritual life on this earth, Supreme Master Ching Hai teaches us the highest method, the Kuan Yin method, which will enable our souls to be liberated from the cycle of birth and death. And in our daily life, Supreme Master Ching Hai reminds us to live a meaningful saint's life in purity and compassion. She shares with us the art of cooking vegetarian cuisine so that we may bring a warm and loving atmosphere to our families and friends. Vegetarian cuisine is not only nutritious, but also helps our consciousness to be in harmony with nature and filled with love for all beings in the universe. Si nous voulons apporter le paradis sur la terre, nous devons vivre comme les êtres du paradis. C'est-à-dire vivre dans fashion harmonieuse en respectant la liberté et le droit de vivre de chacun. Les cinq préceptes et le régime végétarien ne sont pas vraiment obligatoires. Il s'agit seulement d'un style de vie juste et noble, celui d'un gentleman, d'un chat possédant compassion et grandeur, et dont l'amour inclut toutes les créatures. Étant l'être le plus élevé de toute la création, nous pouvons distribuer cette grâce en préservant la vie dans le monde où nous vivons. Et c'est là vraiment contribuer à la paix sur la terre. C'est cela l'amour, la gentillesse en action. Supreme Master Ching Hai encourages and promotes vegetarianism as the noble way of living. She personally designed the Alternative Living Flyer and launched a global campaign to share this peaceful and loving message to the world. If we want to truly lead a life of love thy neighbor, the neighbors including our animal friends, especially they harm us in no way. They only beautify our life and they are loving and they make our life more lively, colorful, and interesting. We should preserve them, watch them, love them, enjoy their presence. God has made it clear. He said, I made all the animals to befriend you and help you. Through her teachings, millions of people have become vegetarians or are changing their ways of thinking in regards to the sentient nature of our animal friends. With heartfelt gratitude, we sincerely thank Supreme Master Ching Hai for setting aside her precious time to share with us these wonderful vegetarian dishes and easy cooking tips. We invite you to join us on Between Master and Disciples for a gift of love, simple and nutritious cooking with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Featuring vegan orange ice cream and pumpkin and vegan cheese fingers. Hey, <laughs> yeah, today we are making two dishes. The first one would be orange ice cream, and the second one be pumpkin and cheese deep fried. Yeah, we can call it uh, pumpkin and cheese fingers. First of all, for the orange ice cream, we have three orange and one and a half sweetened yogurt, plain or vanilla. And for the pumpkin finger, we need uh, like 
half a kilogram of pumpkin fresh and uh, 200 gram of vegan cheese, of course. This is called dairy-free, lactose-free. And also salt and pepper to taste. And some cooking oil. And we need also some bread crumb. And some uh, fruit for decoration. Like this I have here, aubergine, or eggplant. Uh, some left over yesterday, some cucumber and red pepper. And we can also decorate with uh, melon. Yeah. Just whatever color you prefer, and you can eat it also, of course, with it. Instead of preparing salad, you garnish your dish with uh, melon, cucumber, or pepper, or Eggplant you could eat also raw. Most of the fruit you can eat raw anyway. So, so you garnish it to make it like extra dishes without having to make an extra salad. Now first we make the vegan orange ice cream. The orange, we cut the top like that. Yeah. And then we try to get the inside orange out, yeah, and leave the outer skin intact, like a cup. And the inside orange, we put it in a bowl, leave it there, and we're going to blend it, okay? You try carefully to take the inside orange out. You can cut it a little bit like that, so it come out easily. If there's a little bit of the inside left, next to the skin, it's all right. But do not put any hole into the outer layer. So we have a, a cup, can hold liquid. And use also a spoon to scoop some out and squeeze the juice out of the orange by the spoon. You press it gently to the wall of the orange skin and all the juice will come out, as well as the flesh of the orange. It's fun to make with your children. Kids will love to make this kind of thing. See, we will use the outer skin of the orange to make the cup. Later, we put the liquid in there and we put it back like an intact orange. So continue with the next one. You cut here like a cap, not too much so that your cup can hold the liquid that you're going to pour in. We're going to mix orange and yogurt in the blender. There you are. And squeeze the juice out of the orange. Even from the cap. We have three orange and one and a half yogurt. That will be good. Okay. So your orange will become like a cup. You know, like this. They're all cup. And in order to stabilize it, when you put it on the plate, you uh, trim a little bit, very little, flatten the bottom, yeah? Not too much, otherwise you will cut deep inside and then the liquid might leak out. So just enough to stand it. Just flatten the bottom of the orange. There you are. See? So we have three cups ready. <laughs> now we pour the orange that we have from inside into the, uh, the blender. You put it all in, yeah? With the fiber and everything. And we put the vegan yogurt also into it. Sweetened yogurt.
one or two yogurt depends on how big your orange is. Over here we have three uh, medium-sized orange, so I put one and a half yogurt. So th the proportion is two part of the orange fresh and juice and one part of yogurt, like three orange and one and a half yogurt. Four orange, two yogurt, okay? All right, kid. Get ready now. We blend it a little bit, okay? Make it uh, smooth. First, you do it slowly in case it's too much. Good. You see if it's all blending smooth? If not, you blend a little bit. Okay. Uh, we don't make it very, very high speed, okay? Just low speed we do is blend well now. We're going to pour it into the cup that we have, hmm? the orange cup. Gently and slowly. Okay. Arrange your orange cup very well so that it stands good. And then we're going to pour it in. Just fill the cup to the brim. Not overflow, okay? There you are. We have three cups of orange. Left over, you can drink. I'll pour it in uh, another plastic cup to make a simple ice cream instead of inside the orange. Okay, so now we use the the cap that we have cut out and cover it. It's like brand new orange. Cover it and then put in a deep freeze for several hours until the liquid become solid like ice cream. See, like this. So, are we ready for pumpkin finger? Say yes. Good, good. The pumpkin, you show the skin off, huh? Be careful when you do this, okay, kid? When you're holding the pumpkin, you keep the finger away from where the knife is going for safety, okay? Otherwise, you ask your mom to do it for you if it's too hard first. And you do the easy part. And when you grow up, you can do everything when you're learning slowly, bit by bit. In, in childhood, when you grow up, you'll be a fantastic cook. And anything else you like to do, if you learn early. And if you put your concentration to your learning, then you can do well in the school, and you can do well in everything else. I believe in you. Let me finish out. This is from England because mature white cheddar cheese. Delicious daily free alternative to cheese with a cheddar style flavor. Called cheesely. Wow. Dairy free, lactose free. Wonderful. Nice flavor. Okay. So here we have cheese. Ready? And here we have pumpkin ready. We grate them. Okay. Small grater, or you can use fruit processor. But this is in case you want to save electricity. Use this. Use the medium one. Okay, just grate it. If you can't do it, please ask your mom to do it for you. you grate the cheese. Yeah, nicely, nicely done. Here, so you can have a look. Hold the cheese, you know, halfway through your hand and hold the grater in another hand and just keep pushing it downward. And you see it comes out like this, kid. You know it. I like powder grated. Almost like that. And then we grate also the pumpkin. It's a piece of pumpkin, it's too large. Divide it first into 
easy to handle size and also great in the same bowl as the one you have just used for the cheese. For pumpkin, because it's uh, easier to grate, so you can use the bigger size. Yeah. It's fun to cook it. Wow. See, it can become like that. Very finely shred. Or you can use the, the one that we use for cheese, medium size, and it becomes more fine. Either way, it's okay. In order not to mess too much with the surrounding of your kitchen, you put the bowl in the sink. And easier to go down from a higher level. Just keep grating until all your pumpkin is finished. Okay, kiddo. When you grate your pumpkin up to this small part, like two, three of your finger, then please don't try it further because it might hurt your finger, okay? Because you have nowhere else to grab. So just leave it as is. You can eat it raw like that or pop in the soup later. Good kid you are. Vegetarian kids are good kids. They do sell also something to grab the vegetable when you want to grate it. You know, it's more protected for your hand. At the end, if you really still want to grate, then you use a fork. It's a trick. Use a fork to hold it so you don't have to hurt your finger. Mm -hmm. And uh, grate the part that the, the fork does not touch. Like this, you can almost use everything. And it's cool. Almost gone. We're done. Have a lot of cheese and pumpkin to cook now. Ah. Clean your grater, okay? Don't use your hand to clean it ever because it's very sharp. First use a fork or a spoon to scrub it gently. So the sharp part will not get uh, dough. Don't scrub it too much. Yeah, the inside you use a fork or something, or even chopstick to push it all out. Chopstick is longer and less damaging to the fork as well as to the grater. Scrub it out. There, yeah, there. Good, clean. Clean it all from the inside, and then you can use a cloth or a brush to clean the rest later when you are washing your dishes. A little bit left, you can shake it to your bowl. Now we have a mixture of pumpkin and cheese. Almost like two parts of pumpkin and one part of cheese. And you mix it together. More or less. It doesn't have to be exact. Mix them together thoroughly. Thoroughly mix. Good. Fine. Now we add salt and pepper. You can measure it if you want. Like a teaspoon of salt, yeah. Spread it, spread it. And a teaspoon of ground pepper. Not too finely ground. Ground, but you still can see it look grainy a little bit. You can put more or less. And you mix it first. The salt, pepper, and uh, together with the cheese and pumpkin, mix it well with a fork or chopstick. Mix it well and taste it to see if it's good enough. Mmm, it's fine. The vegan cheese is normally a little bit salty already, 
so you take it easy with your salt. Now we could put in a little mushroom seasoning. The mushroom seasoning has no salt in it. You can add it in a bit to enhance the flavor. Right, just like one tablespoon and mix it again, mix it well. You know what's good? We could put in a, a teaspoon of sugar, brown sugar, mm -hmm. so the taste is not too salty. Okay, one teaspoon of sugar in there. You know, <laughs> some people like to see my burrs when I'm cooking and all that, but it's dangerous to leave the burr in the kitchen. We turn the heater on now. And we're going to put some oil in it to heat up. We have the homemade olive oil. <laughs> we can use it to cook today. It has to be grand. Homemade organic from my garden. The oil is heated. We're going to dip the mixture of uh, pumpkin in the breadcrumb. You make it like a finger, okay? All around, all doesn't matter and coat it with the breadcrumb. Coat it well. Use a spoon to cover it. And use a finger to press it a little so it's harder. It becomes more compact. And coat it again in the breadcrumb. Size of the finger, flatten. and use a spoon to ease it into the oil. Power it if it's way too much. And lower the heat. Put like one tablespoon full of the mixture and coat it with bread crumb. Cover it until it's all covered and dry. Then use your hand to handle. Make it into a finger shape. Or thumb shape. <laughs> Doesn't have to be as small as a finger, okay? This size will do, like your thumb. Thumb of the other. Put it in there or ease it with a spoon. Next one, press it so that it's more compact together and not too loose and flatten a little bit so it cook quicker. Doesn't have to be always the same size, eh? Check out the first one. Wow, the first one is already fried. Put it in the seat on the side like this. So some of the oil will drop out into the bowl instead for a while. Then we transfer it into a kitchen towel lined plate. This is nice for a snack or as a meal. After the oil heat it, you turn it to medium heat. So it doesn't go too fast and it cooks nicely inside. When you want to take the pumpkin finger out, you use a spoon to ease it out better. Otherwise, it might break. Because it's not a very hard or solid substance. If you do things gently, then it won't go wrong. Ease it in and use a spoon later to ease it out. Be generous with breadcrumb so that it can also be mixed together with the mixture of pumpkin and cheese. It will add a little bit of solidity to your pumpkin finger. Easier to handle. This one is done. I'm going to take it out. After it's deep fried, it will become harder and it looks like this, it looks like a finger. 
So that's why I call it pumpkin finger. But the trick is, if your pumpkin is too wet, sometimes it's younger and it has more fluid, then you can add in a little bit of uh, wheat flour to stabilize it before you cover with the uh, breadcrumb. Or you can mix more breadcrumb in it. And the heat cannot be too low. Yeah, it better be uh, hot enough, otherwise your pumpkin finger will not uh, fry quick enough and it will broke into pieces. Yeah? If you see that your finger is not uh, fried in uh, one piece but broken into pieces, for example, then you can either mix more flour in and turn up the heat yeah, too high so it fry quick and doesn't break. Okay, there's a few tricks like that. And in such a above mentioned case, when your batter of the pumpkin finger is too soft or something and it breaks all over into your oil, I don't worry, just sip the oil into another pan with a metal sip. And then you have clean oil again and you continue. The best thing is you check out first your mixture of pumpkin whether it's a little watery. If it's a little watery, it's no good. We have to immediately um, put some flour in it to mix, to make it more dry. Because if it's too wet, it won't hold together. Even with the bread crumb. Or you try one first to see if your pumpkin finger hold together in one piece or not. And then you continue. Because if it doesn't hold, then we have to mix a little bit of wheat flour in it. Also depends on the cheese. Sometimes the cheese melts too quick or the cheese is too liquidized in contact with uh, the pumpkin. Then you have to definitely add flour to your mixture of pumpkin finger. If your pumpkin finger mixture is not too wet, then the oil will just be stable like this. It's bubble inside the pan as it's heated, but it doesn't spray at all. See? It just boils nicely, but it doesn't spray. That is when your butter is perfect. Even if I have it on very high, like 12 is the maximum, it still doesn't spray. So that is perfect cookie. Ah, I'm proud of myself, huh? On top of your oven, there are different cookers. And some of them are like heat control. Heat control is best when you want to fry something. Because when it's too hot, the heat will automatically turn itself lower. So it's uh, always nice, even heat. See, when it's golden like this, then it's done. It look golden like this, yeah? Then it is perfect. And you transfer it into a sieve, so the oil will seep out. It's not too oily. Put on the seep, wait there until the oil drip off. And then we put it on our plate. There we are. I have a seep there in a bowl, you see. So the oil will drip in there and it will be fine. See how nice the oil just hit it like that and no spray, nothing. I'm using olive oil. Maybe you can try also. And other cooking oil is fine. We have a lot of olive oil because we have a lot of olive in the garden and my assistant, they are making oil out of it. So we might as well use it. Hmm? Olive oil is supposed to be very healthy. Yeah. You can check on the internet, see what kind of quality olive oil have. I leave it to you to work, so you will be more intelligent, more knowledgeable.
have been a good girl. Thank you. <laughs> so today wow. you are my guest. Wow, guest. Master, what's all this again? Ah, Whoa. this is pumpkin and cheese, finger. We call pumpkin finger, simple. Wow, yeah. Oh, this is a decoration, you uh -huh. know. <laughs> you want to know more? It looks lovely. <laughs> Melon, huh? red pepper, and uh, eggplant. Eggplant, right. <laughs> just okay. make it look nice, but they're just simple things. Wow, what's this mustard? That looks it's very good. It's just uh, mustard and oh. uh, a ring of chili hot sauce. Yes. And this looks really cute. <laughs> it's just butter, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's vegan butter to eat with the bread. I just uh, draw a heart and a smiling face on it. And this mustard? The orange? Open it, looks it and have a look. Oh. Uh, wow! Orange ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> cool. That okay. looks lovely. Yeah. <laughs> eat that after. Or yes. you can eat it okay. before whatever. Because we eat the frying stuff. Yes. So we should mm -hmm. have some fresh uh, vegetable with it. And afterward, the uh, ice cream, so it's cool off. I feel yes. Like cool. yes. So enjoy now. Okay, mm. thank you. You can eat with finger uh -huh. or <laughs> with knife and fork. Okay, take it out. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can eat with uh, mustard, huh? Yes. Mm, yeah. Okay. Or you can eat with bread and butter, and mustard and uh, ketchup. Yeah. There you are. This is it hot, eh? Mm -hmm. Vietnamese uh, hot sauce. Very hot. So oh, be wow. Okay. <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> give it a go, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Don't blame me, huh? Yeah, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil the, the heart and the face, no? Nah? Yeah, it looks so cute. It's cute, it's for love, everything cute for love. Yes. Yeah. Ah, it's just uh, like a snack, you know? Mm -hmm. Or you can eat it as meal, eh? Who cares, eh? Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. Bon appetit. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I let you have a very quiet and nice meal. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I would say good appetite in Cantonese. Um, Maman said you can say. Maman said, mm -hmm. yeah. Maman said. Enjoy. Oh. Yes. Enjoy. Maman said. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need Cantonese for this, right? Mm, yeah. No. Just that. <laughs> you don't have to eat with this even, just alone is nice also. Yes, it's good. How good is it? Very good. <laughs> yes. Ten ten. Ten ten. They don't have this in restaurant, no? Have you ever eaten them? Not this, no. no. I invented it. <laughs> yes. Again. But just in case somebody else had the same mind, I don't know. Uh -huh. I never had this before myself. Oh. oh. <laughs> but this is so good. Yeah. Yeah, try the ice cream. Yes. <laughs> It's fresh. Wow. Oh, just a moment. I get you another spoon, okay? Okay. Here you are. Thank you, Master. Yellow spoon even, to match the orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the green one to match the leaf. Yeah. <laughs> it's fresh, huh? Yeah. Yeah, try it. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Wow. Refreshing. Mm. It is. I like it very much. Yes, me too. Cool? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. Very cool. It's very nice. We enjoyed your company today for a gift of love. Simple and nutritious cooking with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Good People, Good Works is up next right after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May you enjoy more plant-based meals which honor all life. <laughs>